The moon's our closest neighbor in the sky, and perhaps that's how the idea of moon phase gardening started in the first place, which claims that the moon's phase affects plant growth. So you need to plant root crops when the moon is waning, plant leafy greens during the new moon, and plant crops that produce above the ground when the moon is waxing. But there's no science to back these ideas up. The idea is that while the moon is waxing, growing bigger, sap is pulled up through the plant based on the gravitational pull of the moon. The moon's gravity is strongest when it's aligned with the sun during a full or new moon, which does have a big influence on our vast oceans, but it doesn't affect small bodies of water or plants. If that were true, you'd have sap moving up and down twice a day on plants. That would just wreak havoc on their system. Clemson Extension agent Jackie Jordan explains that unlike the ocean, plants are constantly defying gravity. Plants have hormones that tell seeds to send roots down and shoots up, and they have specialized structures like the xylem and phloem that send water up from the roots and nutrients up, down, and any other direction from the leaves. There's no influence from the moon's gravity here, but how about a bright full moon? Could that help plants grow faster? The amount of light produced by the moon is 400,000 times less than the sunniest day. So moonlight doesn't affect plants, but it used to be really important for farmers. Before electricity, farmers would use the full moon to work on their crops into the night. That's why the last full moon of the summer is called the harvest moon. It might be something fun, but I would say you're better off if you pay a lot of attention to the things that really do matter, temperature, humidity. The weather in South Carolina can change in a flash. So when the weather's right, don't wait to get things into the garden. I'm meteorologist Alex Gattelmia.